You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane and the Top 10 Gardener Podcast. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors? What are fellow gardeners? Fellow, is that even it? What are what are other gardeners talking about? You want to be male, female, Don't you want any, any adjectives that promote anything. So um, anyway, what, what are other gardeners talking about? Welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Any great questions going on? And what's what are people talking about some of the gardeners are coming in the the real gardeners are coming in they're they're recon researching yeah. what's in so new potteries here trees are starting to show up a few plants are starting to see some growth not a lot, a lot mainly still <laughs> winter evergreens yeah and then lots of new people just mm -hmm. going okay i know planting season's coming right and i want to do my homework and so they're in just researching what does yeah. a, a, a juniper look like in the dead of winter and it truly is a good time to come and talk to a garden center because we're 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 doing stuff but we'll drop the paintbrush and yeah. talk to you about what trees you want what your garden what fruit trees are you looking for what, when do you start your garden so this is a great time to come in and talk to people um because we're like the Maytag repairman. We're just look yeah. <laughs> we're looking for something to do. In the last half of February, it starts to take off. Yeah. And then we have less because you're just sheer volume right. starts to happen. Soon that nice, nice day in the first daffodils bloom, it's 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 full court press right. at that point. But now until then, yeah, I want to talk. I'm bored. <laughs> I don't want to paint another wall. <laughs> Uh, build another table, fix yeah. another shade structure. So come uh, in and see us, yeah. definitely. Um, so yeah, but there are still stuff going out in the garden right now. Our first question is from Janine. Um, she has some type of plant. She thinks it's an agave yeah. that really took a beating in that last cold. It's kind of turned brown and mushy. Oh. And she wants to know, do you think it will come back or is it a goner? Brown and mushy, ne that's never good for agaves, yuccas, those, you know, cacti. My guess is the heart of it froze. Now, you don't truly know until next spring. So I would say, never say that. Hold off because plants want to live if you give it even a remote chance. But agaves are a huge family of plants. Mm -hmm. And my guess is you've got more of one of those desert varieties like blue agaves, the one they make tequila out of, some of that stuff. We want the Utah gensis, the one that grows up on the canyon, the right. peri eyes, the one that grows on top of the Bradshaws. These are the super hardy agaves, or century plant would be another name they go by. That's one of that great big flower stalk that just goes to the moon all in one year. That's what we're talking about. I mean, all agaves do that. My guess is, Janine, I hate to tell you this, it's a goner. Just kind of prepare yourself for that, <laughs> but then leave it until next spring. And yeah. you'll know by April 1, you'll know oh, yeah. it's, it's either a goner or you know, I just can't, I can't live with this mush in mm -hmm. my bucket. I need a new one. And then come talk to us. We'll help you get the right one or do your research. Top 10 plants.com. That's a <clears> website. <throat> we set up all of our inventories <clears throat> right there on our site or watersgardencenter.com, the shop button at the top. You can, it's there to really research. We just had someone buy a mugo pine. Okay, that's most mugo pines are sold in the garden center, but you research it, tells you how tall it gets here, how wide it gets, how it grows, how much sun, how much wind. We're trying to put that site together. It's not generic, it's put together for our plants and how they grow here at the higher elevations of Arizona. So that's a great resource for you. Yep. Anyway, Janine, okay. sorry to tell you that. <laughs> Hold out hope. Yeah. You never know. Always hope. <laughs> uh, this question is from Allie. She moved from, we'll call it a warmer climate. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, California. Don't say California out loud. Yeah. We love Californians. Come on. We do. We love them. Um, but she used to plant quite a bit of bare root, bare root roses, yeah. gotcha. uh, fruit trees, that type of thing. She wants to know, can bare root be planted in this area? Yeah. And when would you look to plant it? So you're seeing bare root show up in January, February. That's when you put it in the ground. So when it's still dormant. Uh, you can still do it. Here's the reason we don't sell bare root roses or fruit trees here at Waters Garden Center. 
is because in an alkaline soil, which we're extremely alkaline, it's really hard to get those roots to start to form and grow. So the loss rate is extreme on bare root. Uh, so I, what we do is we plant our bare root fruit trees last year. We're now harvesting those now. So we've had a full year of root growth. And now we're bringing those into the garden center and you can plant that. So you're a year advanced. But the main reason you have virtually 100% chance of success. Whereas bare root, generally, I would I would discourage, I would only have neighbors I don't care for plant bare <laughs> root. But everyone else, all my friends, plant a rooted plant. You have much better success, faster growth, more even. It's just going to be better for you, less frustration. So mm -hmm. uh, stay away from bare root. I would say, just as an aside, Ken and I love all our neighbors. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't have any of our neighbors plant bare root. None. They all give advice. I, I give advice. I go, here, let me help. I'll pick one out for you personally. Right. Yeah. We love Sorry. our neighbors. Uh, second thing is, as far as roses, we do get our fiber pot roses, which are, um, they're dormant. The, the rose itself is dormant, but it has been rooted out right. in yeah. the fiber pot. Right. Uh, we get those usually about the second week-ish of February. Yeah. Um, and those are great uh, yeah. to plant because they're usually a little less expensive. Um, plus, you're getting them in um, when they're still dormant. So they leaf out at the appropriate time, right. just less stressful on them. Um, you just have to envision what this rose is going to look like because it, it won't look like anything too yeah. special. You do get the new varieties mm -hmm. with that, but they're fully rooted. That's the thing. Oh, yeah. It's not That's bare the most root. important So thing. bare root is they rip them out of the ground. They, they, they farm them in rows and they rip mm -hmm. them out of the ground. They put them in a bag with some sawdust and here, you want this? Right. And so it's they just aren't rooted. Yeah. And so if you're to take that same bare root at a farm setting, put it in a fiber pot, then root it out for a year and then bring it to the garden center. Now you've got a fully rooted full. It will bloom for you this year. Whereas a bare root rose. Yeah. Uh, they just aren't going to bloom that first year. It's yeah. really hard on plants. You are in the mountains in this area. Definitely. Yeah. OK. Make sure you get that warranty from that box store because you're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let that one go. <laughs> the next question is from Chris. He needs to know if he can top a large Deodor cedar that okay. is blocking part of his view. Yeah. It is now a good time to do that. So, who is that, Chris? Who's yes. that? Chris. Chris. So, Chris, Deodor cedar, this is a monster. It's <laughs> 80 foot, actually, Lebanese cedar. It's where they grow native. So, this is what they made the uh, Ark of the Covenant out of. It's a famous, famous Old Testament type of tree, fast growing. It's going to eventually get to 200 feet. We just aren't, we've only had some in a few dozen years here. So it's it's not done. So it's going to be nothing but a struggle for you. If it's blocking your view, I think you just got to make the call, power up the chainsaw cut it right back to the ground because you are not, it's going to be a constant thing always for you. It's always going to want to block your view. Yes, you could top it, top it now. Uh, this is your best time. It's going to look hideous. Your neighbors <laughs> will mock you going, what's he doing? He topped it. He didn't plant ahead. Just, just a plant a shorter one. Get, get a, get a, a juniper or, or an Arizona cypress. Put a pine tree. They grow half the size of a deer mm. or cedar. Because if it's blocking your view, it's going to continually want to block your view. I would say that's strategizing your views before you landscape is critical. In fact, we've got a garden class on that. I think that's the 20th. We've got a oh. class on how to landscape. We'll cover how to, there's ways to use plants to accent or frame a view. Mm -hmm. So I like to use columnar plants like, like uh, uh, aspens, classic. Put them on either side. Your eye is just drawn from that back patio. Just drawn. Go, look, I can see Granite Mountain. It's spec There's Thumb Butte. Spectacular. I love the sunsets here. We just frame it just like that. But we'd never put, I know it looks innocent when you put a, a six-foot <laughs> Deodor Cedar in, but then it quickly turns into this 40, 50, 60, 80-foot giant that blocks your view. I would say you just got the wrong plant or the wrong place. Probably wasn't even you, Chris. I'm not putting you down. It's probably <laughs> your previous owner of that house put it in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it's going to keep blocking your view. It's time to just yeah. get it out of there. I hate to tell you that, but it's just a plant. It's not a puppy dog. You're allowed to kind of remodel every once in a while. I go, oh, it's good, been good for 10 years. 
Now it's no longer good. Start That's over. true. All right. So Ken and Lisa Lane, the mountain gardeners, we'll be right back after this. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers, and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. You're listening to Ken Lay, a.k.a. the Top 10 Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Family Garden Center. Listen daily as he answers the Top 10 Questions of the Week, streaming on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. 